Bhandara from physics department. Today I will explain the transistor or basics of a transistor. Now this topic is belongs to uh, SYBSC physics. Mechanics of system of particle. Today we will see the mechanics of system of particle. Now the mechanic is a branch of a physics which deals with the motion of a material of a bodies or the mechanics is a science of motion of a bodies which involves two aspects first one is a kinematics second one is a dynamics kinematic involves the motion of a material of a bodies which describe the quantity like a displacement, velocity and acceleration and dynamics of a motion of a body. We study the laws of a motion of a bodies that is cause and production of uh, their motions. So here we have two aspect kinematics and dynamics. Now if you see the historical development in the understanding of a principle of a mechanics of system of a particles started from days of a Aryabhat then after Carbonicus, Galileo, Hygiene, Newton, etc. The subject becomes more popular with the Newtons or subject becomes more popular when the Newton stated his laws of motion of a bodies in 1687 these laws today become backbone of a classical mechanics now in this lecture i only discuss the newton's laws of motion and their applications some applications like projectile motion or rocket motion. Now, exact Newton in 17th century put forth a varieties of laws and that explain the why object move and why object don't move. Now, these laws are called as a empirical laws because these laws are fundamental laws, they can't be derived or proved or deduced from other principles and that's why these laws are called the empirical laws. These three laws are called empirical laws. Newton's first law of motion sometimes refer as a law of inertia will give the concept of a inertia, first law of motion. Now first law of motion can be stated in the simple form. Every body continues to be in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon some external force on it. Or in another way, every object in state of a uniform motion will remain in the state of a uniform motion unless it is acted by some external force act on it. Newton's second law, force is equal to mass into acceleration, very famous relation. And third law, 
reaction and reactions are equal and opposite in the directions so this is the newton's third law which is very important for the application of a rocket motion now the projectile motion now the application of a newton's laws is a projectile motion because newton's laws are applied in the projectile motion so what do i understand by the projectile motion the projectile is an object upon which only force acting is a force due to the gravity so there are varieties variety of examples of projectile motion batted ball thrown football javelin thrown by the athletes is also projectile motion an object dropped from the rest is also projectile motion provided the air resistance is negligible an object thrown vertically upwards is also projectile motion provided the air resistance is negligible an object which is thrown upwards at an angle to the horizontal is also projectile motion that means the projectile is an object that once it is a projectile or drop continues in the motion by its own inertia and it is influenced only by the downward force that is the force due to the gravity and fourth one the path followed by the projectile is called its trajectory so the trajectory is nothing but the path trace route followed by the projectile is called its trajectory so this is the concept or the definition of a trajectory so these are the types of a projectile or the examples of a projectile motion in the in this diagram now we see the projectile motion as shown in the diagram let us suppose that the body is projected with the horizontal with initial velocity v u in the resistive medium sorry u in the resistive medium as shown in figure so the body is projected with the initial velocity u in the resistive medium now the you try to find out the equation of a trajectory an equation of a trajectory is based on the three assumptions the first assumption is that the acceleration due to the gravity remains constant throughout the motion second assumption is the effect of a rotation motion due to the earth is negligible third assumption the force of air resistance is directly proportional to the velocity of a projectile so these are the three assumptions why you calculate the trajectory of a projectile motion so i shown in this figure you fire the projectile or uh, now the projectile motion is a two dimensional that is x and y coordinates on x and y coordinates and let u be the initial velocity and theta be the angle of a projection as shown in figure u be the initial velocity and theta is the angle of a projection as shown in figure now the initial velocity can be resolved into two, two components that is the vertical component and horizontal component so v x o is equal to u cos theta that is the horizontal component and vertical component v y o is equal to u sin theta these are the two components of a velocity along x and y direction vertical and horizontal direction now try to find out the horizontal motion of a projectile 
Now we know that fx force on fx is equal to minus k m v x, where k is the resistive force, m is the mass of projectile, v x is the velocity along x-axis. So according to Newton's second law, mass into acceleration that is m dv by dt is equal to minus k m vx or I can write m dv by vx is equal to minus k dt. So if I integrate equation number 1, I will get integration of vx by dvx by vx is ln of vx is equal to minus kt plus c1 because k is a constant and integration of a minus dt is minus t so it becomes minus kt plus c1 is my equation number 2 now in this equation number 2 c1 is a constant of integration and I try to find out the constant of integration by using the initial conditions and what are the initial conditions t is equal to 0 vx is equal to vxo then if I substitute these initial condition in equation number 2 I will get ln of vxo is equal to c1 and if I substitute the value of c1 in equation number 2 I will get ln of vx is equal to minus kt and the value of c1 is ln of xo so ln on one side ln of vx by vxo is equal to minus kt vx is equal to remove the ln right hand side goes to e raised to something vx is equal to vxo e raised to minus kt is my equation number 3 but we know that vx is a velocity along x axis and velocity is nothing but the distance divided by time dx by dt therefore dx by dt is equal to vxo e raised to minus kt so I am interested in dx dx on one side dt goes on that side ok so vx vxo is equal to e raised to minus kt into dt that is my equation number 4 so if I integrate equation number 4 integration of a dx is x Vxo is a common integration of a e raised to minus kt is minus k e raised to that thing that is my e raised to minus kt plus c2 is my equation number 5 where c2 is a integration constant constant of integration so once again I determine the constant of integration by using the initial conditions and my initial conditions are x is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 so I substitute this initial condition and try to find out the value of a constant c2 and my value of a constant c2 is equal to minus vxo divided by k is my equation number 6 so I directly substitute the value of a c2 in equation number 5 so x is equal to minus v x o as it is divided by k e raised to minus k t this term as it is plus minus of v x o divided by k bracket complete or I can write x is equal to v x o divided by k into bracket 1 minus e raised to minus k t is my equation number 7 but I know that 
the Vx so is equal to u cos theta and that's why I can write equation number 7 as a x is equal to u cos theta divided by p 1 minus e raised to minus t is my equation number 8 so that minus sign is there so x is equal to u cos theta divided by k x is equal to u cos theta divided by k into bracket 1 minus e raised to kt so this equation gives the position of a body at any time t along the horizontal axis then we see the vertical motion now in case of the vertical motion now the equation of motion along the vertical upwards that means along y direction or y axis so fy is equal to minus mg minus km v1 is my equation number 1 and this minus sign indicates that the acceleration due to the gravity is vertically downwards and I introduce this minus mg is the force in the downward direction so that is minus mg then m dv by dt is equal to minus mg that is downward force vertically downward force minus k m v y therefore dv dv y by dt is equal to minus g minus k v y and get cancer so dv y divided by g plus k v y is equal to minus dt so that means dt on this side is my equation number 2 if I integrate equation number 2 I will get plus 1 by k ln of g plus k v y bracket complete integration of a dt is minus t plus c3 where c3 is a constant of integration and as usual you determine the constant of integration by using the initial conditions that is t is equal to 0 vy is equal to vy0 then I can write c1 is equal to plus 1 by k ln of g plus k v y o is my equation number 4 is the value of c3 I directly substitute the value of c3 that is 1 by k ln of g plus k v y as it is minus t as it is and the value of c3 is equal to plus 1 by k ln of g plus k v y o therefore rearranging the terms ln of g plus k v y divided by g plus k v y o is equal to minus k t or I can write g plus k v y that means I remove the ln on right hand side raise e raise to something that is g plus k v y is equal to g plus k v y o bracket complete e raise to minus k t or I can write k v y on one side everything on other side that is g plus k v y 
e raised to minus kt as it is and g comes on this side becomes minus that is minus g therefore i am interested to find out vy is equal to divided by k so g plus k vy bracket complete e raised to minus kt divided by k on this side minus g by k or i can write g by k e raised to minus kt plus k vy o e raised to minus kt divided by k minus g by k that means i rearrange the terms and i finally find out vy is equal to vy o e raised to kt minus g by k bracket 1 minus e raised to kt bracket complete is my equation number 6 but here vy is equal to dy by dt that is the velocity so dy by dt is equal to vy o as it is e raised to kt minus g by k 1 minus e raised to minus kt so only i substitute the value of vy that is dy by dt so I am interested in dy, dy on one side, everything on other side. So that is vy o e raised to minus kt into dt minus g by k dt plus g by k e raised to minus kt into dt. So integrating equation number 7, I will get y is equal to minus of vy o divided by k k comes down e raised to minus kt minus g by k and integration of a dt is t minus g by k down it becomes k square e raised to kt plus c4 and here c4 is a constant of integration you can determine the constant of integration by using the initial conditions and the initial conditions are t is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 then i substitute these initial conditions i will get the value of a c4 and value of a c4 is vy divided by k plus g by k square i directly substitute this value in equation number 8 and the equation number 8 becomes by substituting the value of a c4 y is equal to minus y vy o divided by k e raised to minus kt minus g by k into t minus g by k square e raised to kt minus kt plus the value of a c4 vy o by k plus g by k square is my equation number 9. So once again I rearrange the terms. So I will get y is equal to g plus k vy o divided by k square into 1 minus e raised to kt minus g by k into t is my equation number 10. And as usual, I substitute the value of VYO is equal to U sin theta. Instead of VYO, I substitute U sin theta. I will get Y is equal to G plus KU sin theta divided by K square into 1 minus E raised to minus KT minus G by K into t is my equation number 11 and this equation 11 gives the equation for the vertical motion thank you